Hi, this is Esther with Discover Your Origins. In this video, I'm returning back to Nancy Langford and some of the research that I've been able to do and being able to find some more sources for her and her husband, Tyre Snellgrove. I've been working on the Langford descendancy research uh, of James Langford, who's the father of Nancy. and. As I go through his children, there aren't very many sources or no sources attached to any of the family. It's a little bit surprising because the Langfords and the Snellgroves were rather prominent in Saluda. They had large families, lots of descendants. So it's a little surprising that I've really been struggling to find uh, records and whatnot for the family. However, sometimes we have to, instead of just doing random searches, uh, we need to stop and reevaluate what we know uh, before we can go forward. And that's what I did in this case. And in particular, I took a little bit closer look at Tyre and what I know about him. Because sometimes when you're researching a woman in the 18, early 1800s, you need to look at their husband or their father or brother or something like that, a male member of their family, in order to track where they went. Because women... They changed their names when they got married, and there wasn't really very many records created for them. So anyway, uh, so we're going to take a look at Tyre and what we know about him. Okay, so here we have Tyre, and the first thing we're going to look at is what Family Search has on Tyre. So Family Search says that Tyre was born about 1800 in South Carolina, which seems to jive with the 1830 and the 1840 U.S. Census. And supposedly he dies about 1850. I've yet to find a death record for him, so hard to say if that's accurate. And supposedly he's married to Nancy Langford, and Family Search says that they have a daughter named Martha. When we look at the 1830 census, we have some different family members. We have a male child, 0 to 5 years old. We have Tyre, who's 20 to 29, which makes sense if he's about 30 years old he'd fit into that category and then one female that's 15 to 19 years old now this female does not seem to match up with nancy because nancy's born uh, later this this person would have been born about 1820 and nancy is born much later so i suspect that tyre probably had a first wife and child and maybe they both died. It's hard to say. I mean, life in the 1830s had to have been very difficult. Anything could have happened. So, uh, but that's what the state of the family looked like in 1830. Then in 1840, we have Tyre again. So his age matches about what it should be, um, probably about 39 or 40. And there's two different children now. We have a female that's zero to five and another female that's five to nine years old. So um, we have one child that could be born as early as 1835 and as late as 1840. And then another child that could have been born about 1831 to about 1835. Um, and then there's a female 30 to 39, which seems to fit Nancy. And then there are a total of four enslaved persons. So this means that Tyre may have had some property and was farming by 1840. So when we look a little bit um, closer now, we have some questions. Was Tyre married more than once? Did Tyre own property? And is Tyre in the 1850 U.S. Census? Maybe. Uh, we don't know. And then as we look closer at the census records, we're going to look for people who are his neighbors. So we have a John Snellgrove, and this John Snellgrove is between the ages of 50 and 60 years old. And I hypothesize that's probably his father because he's just a few lines down and he seems to match the age of what a father would have been for Tyre. And there had also been some suggestions of a John Snellgrove being his father previously in Family Search that I disconnected. There are some extended family members. There's a Larkin Snellgrove and a Sam Snellgrove. And then we have Asa Langford, James Langford, and John Langford on the next page of the census. So the Snellgroves and the Langfords most likely knew each other because they were in the same area. 
Um, and then when we look at the 1840 census, we have a John Roll. And I, you see I added a John Roll here as well um, in the, for the 1830 census fans and an Elizabeth Snellgrove, which I haven't quite been able to place this Elizabeth Snellgrove um, with uh, this John Snellgrove. There is a couple together, John Snellgrove and Elizabeth. Not sure 100% if they're connected or not. Hard to say. And whether this Elizabeth is related to Tyre, I don't know. So this is what we know about Tyre. Okay, so that brings me back to Tyre. So I'm going to just flip over and uh, to his page. Let's go over here. I'm going to just flip over to the page for Tyre and we're going to look at what I've done so far. So I did a bit of looking around and this couple, Tyre, had been previously connected to as a child. And it seems to fit. Uh, the John Snell Grove that was in the 1830 census was 50 to 60 years old, which means he would have been born about 1780. And that seemed to fit better than the other uh, couple that he had been previously attached to. Also, when we look at the extended tree for Tyre, we see that he is a grandchild of Edward Freeman Snellgrove. And when we look at um, some of the extended uh, family members, and I'd have to expand the tree, um, for some of these other family members, we find Sam Snellgrove and Larkin Snellgrove. So Tyre is most likely connected as a grandchild to this Edward Freeman Snellgrove. This Edward Freeman Snellgrove was one of the original settlers in Orangeburg, South Carolina. He, he was born in 1740, according to and Orangeburg, and his father, also named Freeman Snellgrove, um, he came from Virginia to South Carolina. So the the Freeman Freeman Snellgrove and Edward Snellgrove, you know, they had been in um, Orangeburg for quite a long time, probably, and so that's how that family ended up in Lexington County and specifically the Saluda River area. Okay, so I've connected Tyre to John Snellgrove and Axa Gilbert. Whether that is accurate or not still needs to be vetted, and I know that's not good to necessarily attach people without more sources, but based on indirect evidence, it seems like the most likely connection, and hopefully um, as other people start to research this family, we will be able to clear that up. I'm fairly confident that Tyre is related to Edward and Freeman. So somehow that connection just needs to be vetted. And then I'll bear this out here in a minute, but this daughter of Tyre and Nancy, Martha Ann Snellgrove, that also needs some additional research. I've contacted some of the contributors on Family Search that put Martha in for Tyre to ask them what evidence they had for that connection. But it there's a very good chance that it's correct because Martha marries this John Solomon Hendricks. And if you look at the 1830 and the 1840 and even the 1850 census, Tyre Snellgrove is living next to families named Hendricks. So um, this needs a bit more looking to see his John Solomon Hendricks's connection to possibly the Langfords and the Snellgroves. So that's the state of things right now. So let's go back and look at the sources. Because when we started, there were no sources for Tyre. And now you can see there are five. And I also added some notes. Um, you can add this alert note, which is a newer feature in Family Search. And so here are my reasoning statements for um, connecting Tyre to John Snellgrove and Axa Gilbert. There's no direct evidence, but it 
I explain here why I think that that's probably the correct connection. And when you do stuff like that in family search, it is helpful to add your your thoughts and why you think that that's the most likely scenario, even if you don't necessarily have sources, because that way when the next person comes along and they see this, they'll they'll understand where you're coming from and not think that it was just made up. All right, so now we'll look at the sources and you can see here I've got 1830 and 1840, and then I've got a couple of deeds, which we'll look at here in a minute. But I found an 1850 census record for a tire snow grove. And the name is unusual enough that it made me want to look twice. So according to the index, this tire snow grove is only two years old. And they've got him listed with this other family here, which I don't know why, um, as far as the index is concerned, why that is the case. But Tire Snow Grove is enough of an unusual name that I wanted to look closer. I only know of two tires. There's this one and then um, the son of one of his siblings, I think is named Tire. When we go and we look closer, um, we can see here Tire Snow Grove, two years old. Now here's the weird thing. He's listed as being an overseer. He's in his own household. So that seems a little bit odd. And I suspect that that age is wrong because if this was our tire snow grove, he should be around 50 years old and possibly maybe he's 52 because, uh, you know, those early census records we have, those are estimates on ages. But you can look up above at the women above uh, tire and you can see there's a Rebecca Frazier and a Jemima. And they're listed as seven and five years old in their own household and they have property worth $500. That also seems wrong. So I am going to assume that this tire snow grove is our tire snow grove born about 1800, who should be about 50 years old because a two year old would not be living on their own and they would not be an overseer. So um, this is why it's important not to rely on the index only. If something doesn't seem right, definitely look closer. And as we look closer, you can see here, there's a Hendrix. If we scroll up, we've got another Hendrix, another Hendrix. We've got some people with the last name of Frazier and that will become important here in a minute. So the likelihood that if Tyre Snellgrove had a daughter that married a Hendrix is higher because He's living next to Hendrix's. We just want to keep that in mind. Okay. So those are the sources. And now um, I am going to talk about the deeds here that I found because they are interesting. But there's another piece to this puzzle. And in order to explain the deeds and how that provides evidence for the relationship between Tyre and Nancy depends on Nancy's father, James Langford. So as I was working on Tyre and Nancy and I'm reviewing everything I knew, I did a bit more looking. I was trying to find uh, wills and probates for John Snellgrove, Tyre's potential father, not finding anything. But James Langford has a will and a probate in Lexington County, South Carolina. And so I decided to look a lot closer at that. And so I found it on Ancestry. So we'll jump over there to Ancestry. And here it is. So there are various people named on this record. And you can see here, we've got James the father. Then we've got three boys, William, James, John, Jay. Then we've got the mentions of two enslaved people. Then there's a mention of Nancy. It's indexed incorrectly here, but that's Nancy Snellgrove, Martha, and Susanna. Those are the daughters of James Langford. So now all of a sudden I've got sources for multiple people here that I didn't necessarily have before. And that is Susanna, Martha, and Nancy. Um, same for the sons. There was a few more records for them, but you know, where the daughters didn't have anything at all, I now have sources for them. So 
um, we need to actually go back and look at this. And sometimes reading these old wills and probates are difficult because of the writing, um, the penmanship. But um, I'll just see if I can try to highlight it. So about somewhere here in the middle, it says that he's giving land to my son, William B. Langford, and some additional land to his other son, John, and he, he talks about giving um, the mill and cotton gin equipment to all three sons to be divided equally. And the point is here that he's only mentioning three sons. So we'll go back and look at the family listing, but there's another son here that's not mentioned at all. And so you would expect that if there was a fourth son, he would have been mentioned here. Okay, and then we go down further and let's look. It says, I give and bequeath unto my daughter, Nancy Snellgrove, and the heirs of her body, $100 in the place of land to that amount. I also give to my daughter, Martha Hammond, and the heirs of her body, $100 in the place of land. All right, and then if we go to the next page, and it says the portion equal, so he's giving another portion equal to that of Susanna Snellgrove, which I gave her that amount in land after marriage, after marrying uh, Snellgrove. Of her marrying Snellgrove. I now bequeath the residue of my personal estate to my several children. And so then he lists um, his children. And so basically he gave, um, he divided his land between his three sons. Uh, they were to either keep the land or sell it to one of the other brothers if they didn't want it, which is what William eventually does. They were to inherit the, the mill and the cotton gin equipment an equal ownership among the brothers. And then each of the daughters received a hundred dollars. But what's interesting here is that we know that Nancy's married name is Snellgrove. So that's important. So let's go back to the James Langford family here. Okay. So the three sons that inherited property were William, James, and John James. Um, and they are different children, John's, James Ray and John James. Um, I have to verify that those are actually their names. I don't know why Joab is not mentioned. So that is a question of whether he's a legitimate son. And then Asa is also not mentioned. So if Asa is a child of James and Nancy Bell, James Langford and Nancy Bell, then he probably died before 1841 when the will was um, executed. And the reason I say that is because the land is only divided three ways and William had already moved to Alabama. So if Asa was still alive and he had moved, he would have inherited a portion and the land would have been divided four ways instead of three. So that's why I think he probably died and then I was able to add um, a source record now to Susanna, who didn't have one because she's mentioned in that will. Same with Nancy and same with Martha. And we can also correlate their married names. So not a direct record or support between Nancy and Tyre, but definitely between Nancy and a Snellgrove. That's good because now we have some sources for those women. Now that takes us back to Tyre and looking at the deeds and conveyances. Tyre has land and we know that from the 1840 U.S. Census. And he is listed in here. Let's see. Here we go. The bottom of this page. 
and he's conveying 100, 100 acres of land from himself to W.G. Frazier. And this is land that's in Lexington District or Lexington County. And there's a whole property description here. It says in the consideration of $400. Uh, so he sells his, his 100 acres for $400 and um, describes the, the boundaries and whatnot. So, and there's Tyre Snell Grove and it's um, witnessed and signed uh, and sworn to before Joel Kiesler, who's also a prominent property owner in that area. So that and the date of this is the 14th day of December, 1847. So three years before the 1850 U.S. Census. So it would make sense if Tyre is no longer farming in 1850 and he has some other occupation, such as overseer. That helps establish that this Tyre, Snell Grove, who's incorrectly listed as two years old in the 1850 census is probably our Tyre. I'm kind of at a point here where I'm not going to be able to do very much more probably for Tyre and Nancy until I can view the published genealogies at the Family Search Library in Salt Lake City and see uh, what more has been done on the Langford family. But I feel pretty good that we went from having zero sources to having five for Tyre and one for Nancy that connects the two of them. I hope that was helpful seeing the process of looking for records and what you can do to find some records and sources to attach to people in family search who have no sources at all. Going through this process, you know, you could see that there is hope to, that you can find the information. It's still a challenge for this particular time period and this particular location, but don't give up hope. It is possible to find sources. So. Um, in the next video, I may take a look at Martha and Snellgrove and possibly a, a sister that I found on some other trees in Ancestry. And we'll see if maybe they are children of Tyre and Nancy. If not, then I'll be moving on to Nancy's sibling, James Ray Langford, and taking a look at him. So until then, um, we'll see you next time.